Amen. Praise the Lord. Morning star. Amen. We've had such a wonderful time in the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for all the praise and worship that went forth, thanking God for the spirit of excellence and intentionality. Amen. I'm going to ask that you would open in your Bibles to Luke 1 and 34 and verse 35. That will we'll be taking our text from. Again, that is Luke 1 in 34, the following verse. Of course, I want to thank the Lord for my mother, the elect lady of this church. Why don't we thank the Lord one more time for the elect lady, Mama. Love you on this Mother's Day. Amen. If you have found your place, could you please say amen? It's so good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Amen. Some of us just have to remember there was a little time ago where we didn't know exactly where we would be, how things were working out, but we're so thankful that God has made a way for us to be in the house of the Lord, and today we celebrate that. Amen? Verse reads, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for what we have felt, what we have experienced, what you have prepared in the atmosphere. We will receive it. We ask for you to speak. That you would anoint my mouth and my lips, Lord, to deliver the exact message that you have intended for this day. We pray for every saint, every visiting friend. Pray blessings upon every mother. That, Father, we would gain and we would grow from your presence, from your word. We push against every distraction, every hindrance that may get in the way. And, Lord, we receive the rhema word for this day. In the precious and the holy name of Jesus, somebody say... Amen, and you may be seated. The title that the Lord has given me this afternoon is Overshadowed, But Not Overfilled. Overshadowed, But Not Overfilled. As we celebrate Mother's Day today, we honor the fact that a wonderful a beautiful woman has brought all of us into this world, and I believe for such a time as this. The miracle of procreation that was instituted in the very beginning is a reminder of God's generational opportunities and his abundant grace and his blessings. We can see in Genesis 3 and 20 where the Bible tells us that Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Eve or Kava in the Hebrew means life or life giver. And it seems as though she was called a mother before she became one. Maybe Adam was speaking of her potential. I believe he understood that she was created with a biological design to conceive, to deliver, to nurture, and to raise a child. When he saw her, I believe he saw that she had the capacity to carry hope for the future by literally and physically carrying it. Just according to her beauty, strength, and abilities, it seems as though she should have got a free pass. Can somebody say amen? Have you heard that phrase, I'm your mother? But I'm your mother, though. Truthfully, she is delivering destiny, mother, 
through the hand of God. And although she is deserving of much, there's more to her life than solely being a mother. Let us look at the life of another mother in the book of Luke. Luke 1 and 26 tells us that the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The scripture tells us that the angel came and he told her that you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You are blessed among women. But when she saw the angel, she was troubled. She was worried in her mind what manner of greeting or salutation this should be. But the angel Gabriel said unto her in verse 30, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. But Mary had a concern. She was worried. She responded to the angel. How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. She had an angelic visitation. She was deemed as favored. She was called blessed among women. She was declared that the Lord was with her. In saying the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and the power of the highest is going to overshadow you. You're going to have a son. Here's his name. Here's his purpose. Here's his bloodline. Here's his family. Here's his eternal kingdom. To sum it up, you're about to give birth to the Savior of the world. No pressure. We can look at the account of Mary, and it's amazing that she was blessed in this manner, and that God used her as a wonderful, a beautiful vessel for humanity. But as we look over her life, there was a bit of a conflict that we've got to look into. And just as Adam called Eve life or life giver, the angel Gabriel called Mary favored, blessed, close to God, about to deliver help for humanity. And you would think that in both of these cases that their design and their purpose alone would carve out a place next to God. But as magnificent as that all was, it was not enough. Mary had an encounter with the Holy Ghost. She was overshadowed by the power of the highest, but had that been enough, she wouldn't have found herself in a greater place. Everybody say a greater place. I'm trying to draw an illustration that the Lord put in my spirit, and maybe I can say it in this way as it may apply to your life. Your gifts are not greater than the complete will of God. Or maybe I can say it like this. Your good works are not greater than simple obedience. Again, I'm going to say your good works are not greater than simple obedience. Just because you can do something according to your God-given abilities 
uh, preach, sing, play, testify, have charisma doesn't give you a free pass. Just because you've been a vessel of God, just because you've preached a message, or, or just because you've sung a beautiful song does not give you a free pass into the gates of heaven. You could be used of God, but not walking with God. And in these days, we have to understand, I may have had an experience. I may have been touched. You may have even been healed, but you've got to walk with Jesus because there is a complete plan that you've got to work out in your life. The word overshadowed means to tower above and cast a shadow over. An example is an enormous oak tree stood overshadowing the cottage. The act of overshadowing deals with towering above and casting a shadow down below. When God Almighty has a personal assignment he can, and he has produced a son and salvation through this very process of overshadowing. His son was begotten according to this fashion, but it was for humanity. Mary still needed to fill a void that was personal. The overshadowing was for a specific time and purpose. She was such a wonderful vessel, but a vessel that still needed a personal infilling. Used of God, but there was still more. I bet that if you or I were in her shoes, the pride would have been a little, <clears throat> a little pride in the fact that we were used of God in this fashion. That angel came and spoke to us personally. And that from that point on, as I said earlier, maybe we could take that free pass. But I believe the Lord wants us to look at her life and her example to see that even though she was used of God in the most powerful of ways, there was still more in her life. This speaks to our young people Mom and dad can be on fire for the Lord. But are you really walking where you need to walk for yourself? You may have gifts and abilities that the church uses. You may have helped us with construction or technically or musically or, you know, you could do something in the house of God. But I'm here to tell you, don't let that get in the way of your full potential and purpose with God because you will be selling yourself short. <laughs> Acts 1 and 13 tells us that when they were come in, they went to the upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. In the first chapter of the book of Acts, there is a lift, list of who was in the spiritual birthing room. Mary is noted as being present. Not only was she present, but it tells us that what she experienced, that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven, cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The birth of the church in Acts 2 records that everyone present, the 120, 
were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They all spoke with tongues, a heavenly language. Mary had been in another delivery room previously, the manger. But what she delivered there would make way for her to not just be overshadowed, but to be infilled. To not just be overshadowed, but to be filled. This kind of infilling, it causes an overflow. If there's something that we need in these last days is to walk in that overflow. We're Pentecostal. We believe that we should walk in the Holy Ghost. We believe that more people should receive the Holy Ghost. We believe that we should be filled every day with the Holy Ghost. I'm here to tell you, don't let your talent, your ability, your mama or your daddy get in the way of you getting a good old-fashioned infilling of the Holy Ghost. It may have been 20 years since you spoke in tongues. It may have been a moment since you really felt God. But even here on Mother's Day, we are going to celebrate the Holy Ghost and we're going to say father whatever it takes for me I've got to be in your will and I want to walk in the Holy Ghost Jesus touch me one more time I felt your presence I've been used of you but God I want you deep on the inside to the point that there is an overflow I want my testimony to affect my brother on the left and the right I want my life to speak of your goodness your mercy your power and your authority Jesus To be overfilled is to have more in a container than it either should or can hold. Man, we need more. The overshadowing leads to an infilling. Just because you've been used in his purpose doesn't guarantee you are walking in his way. Maybe this message will, we, we, we can... Uh, Directed at those who've become comfortable, but that they've been used of God, but not filled of God. I feel good when I do things for the kingdom. I love working for the kingdom. I love being a part of the technical staff, the musical staff, the, the uh, helping the Wednesday school department, the ushers, our greeters. I, I love being in ministry. I love pastoring. I, I love serving the Lord. But I'm here to tell you in all the things that God has allowed me to do in his name, I have to be so careful that I'm not just walking according to the overshadowing that I had a moment to, or back in the day I, I, I had an encounter with God. But I've got to realize that today, I've got to walk in full salvation and that there's more that God has determined even for my life. I need more Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost, that anointing that's going to break the yoke. I said I need more Holy Ghost in my life. I need to preach with more Holy Ghost. I need to pray with more Holy Ghost. I need to love with more Holy Ghost. I need to praise with more Holy Ghost. I need to lift him up with more Holy Ghost. Why? Because it is a gift that he has bestowed upon my life and I can't count on yesterday's blessings yesterday's touches to think that that is enough for me overshadowed but not overfilled the reason that we have dead churches in these last days is because there was not the sense of humility to break themselves for that day, to let God just feel them for what they needed for that moment. I've seen preachers that had their day. I've seen saints that had their season. But God, we have to be renewed daily. Today is the day of salvation. I don't know about you, but I'm fighting against the spirit that COVID has brought into the kingdom. And, and we're going to stand united and we're going to lift him up. We're going to magnify him. And if there was ever a time and a moment to be filled with the Holy Ghost, it is now. I don't know the last time you experienced the power, the wonder working power of God. 
but if it has been a minute, today is your day. Right now is your opportunity to feel the power of God like never before. Could you imagine what Mary experienced? She was overshadowed, but she still needed to make her way to that upper room. By the way, she is not the mother of God. She's the mother of Jesus. And in these last days, we need to know who we worship. We need to know what we worship. And I'm excited that I believe that even this afternoon, that we, as the preaching is going forth, someone can receive the Holy Ghost. You know what happens when you get the Holy Ghost? The Bible says in the book of Acts that the apostle Peter was so full of the Holy Ghost and there was so much faith surrounding the signs, miracles, and wonders that they would lay people on the sides of the street that his very shadow would overshadow them and they would be healed. It's time for a revival in our lives. It's time for us to declare, I don't want to be touched, but I want just to be touched, but I want to live in the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost today God give me the Holy Ghost if I don't have it or refill me father because I need it more than never before so many people have been caught up on their past experiences again maybe you can teach maybe you understand certain levels of doctrine but if you're not walking in the overflow you're going to lose your way. My God, all hell has come against us. I've been fighting against discouragement as much as you have. But that's why we have to just tuck in and say, Father, uh, get on our knees and say, Lord, I need your strength for this day. I need your strength for this moment. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord telling me, greater is he that is in, than is in you than he that is in the world. You've got the Holy Ghost. You've been baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus. You have asked for forgiveness of your sins. God is doing something. You can push past the discouragement, the despair that you feel through the Holy Ghost. We have lost a lot. We have dealt with a lot in these last couple of months. And, and, and some of us are like as a fish out of water. But I'm here to tell you, the, the Spirit is calling you. You've got to tap into that source. You were born again of the water, but you were also born again of the Spirit and you may be living off the old spirit or your human spirit, but you need the Holy Ghost today. I'm going to ask that you would stand. I'm not going to push. I'm not going to prod. But I just feel that God wants to feel somebody for the first time or again. With his spirit. You may be religious or a very good person. That's great. And we're thankful that you're not a mean, ugly person. We're thankful for that. But just as in Mary's case, there was more to the good things that God did through her. She couldn't just be overshadowed. She had to be overfilled. Maybe your form of religion it's just kind of dead and you're not feeling and you're, there's no infeeling in you. Well, God wants to live in you. And in this place, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You just have to believe. In this place, you can be refilled. Maybe you've gone through a season where it's been dry and a wilderness experience. You can get refilled today. But more than ever before, the church of the living God must hunger and desire after his spirit to be filled. I'm going to call those to the altar that we would simply seek after him. That even on this Mother's Day that we would be used of God. The men can come up to the front.
We're praying that an overfeeling would happen and outpouring would fall upon you. Lord, I don't want to live according to yesterday's blessing. I don't want just a touch. I don't want to just be intellectual about it, just to have head knowledge. But Father, that you would feel me.